So thank you so much for joining us, Holly. If you want to start by just giving people a quick overview on how you got started within the industry, that would be amazing. Yay, thank you for having me. Um, so I started back in 2016. Um, I had just graduated from Texas State with a BFA in photography. No idea what I wanted to do. I did originally want to be an artist and, you know, go that route, but um, I just kind of fell into weddings. Like one of my old college roommates asked me to shoot her wedding and then it just kind of snowballed from there and AJ joined me and I started a business and yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how did you go from photography to knowing that you wanted to focus on weddings? Mm. Well, I mean, to be blunt, I decided that I wanted to, like, have a career and make money. (laughs) 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 Being an artist is just like, oh my gosh, there's no, um, there's no consistency, there's no guarantee on anything, so... Um, I kind of left that dream behind when, I mean, I learned a lot about the art world in school. They taught us a lot about it. So luckily I was, um, I got a reality check pretty, (laughs) pretty early on. But um, once I started doing weddings, I just decided that I wanted to be more people focused and couple focused, you know, instead of, I mean, being an artist is so individualistic and it's all just about me and my own conceptions, but I decided I wanted to work with people and work with like, you know, the most joyous time in their life. Um, and doing it alongside AJ has been amazing. Like I did not think that I'd be able to have a career with him, you know, um, and it's just been amazing. (laughs) Okay. So let's touch on that for a second. So how does that look like working with AJ? Like what does he do within the business? What do you do? Do you y'all, uh, cohesively get along within the business? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, there was definitely some growing pains at first. I mean, so he has a day job, so it's not like we're doing this 24 seven together. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't, I think that would cause more problems than what we're doing right now, but, um, I'm kind of just like the, the brains behind it, I guess. And I do most of the business stuff. Like he definitely helps me and supports me and writes email for me sometimes. (laughs) Um, but he's mainly there just during the shooting. That's when he, that's where his role is for sure. Awesome. Um, okay. So now kind of take us back to when you knew that it was time to invest in like a brand in a website. Oh man. So this would have been last summer, I think. Um, It's kind of a slow season, you know, for weddings. And I had just been thinking back on my spring season and thinking about all the amazing couples that we got to work with. And I just started like feeling this like drive and feeling like I knew exactly who I wanted to serve. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew the message. Like I had it really clear in my head. And then I would look at you know, my website and I'd be like, oh man, (laughs) I'm just not conveying any of this at all. Cause I had done completely DIY. I mean, I had like a template, but my brand, everything, I made it in Photoshop myself, like my little logo. Um, not great. (laughs) It just did not convey all these feelings that I felt so strong about all of a sudden. So, um, that's when I decided, I mean, rebranding was always like this far off dream, you know, that when I had so much money and everything was wonderful and perfect that I would rebrand, you know? Um, so I kind of pitched the idea to AJ and I was like, I feel like so strong about this message that I want to put out there. And I have no idea how, obviously it's not my forte. Obviously I, <laughs> I'm not a web designer, I'm not a, you know, brand specialist. Um, and he was like, well, I think you just have to do it. Like, I think, you have this like strong feeling, you have to just like respond to it and, and do it. Like what, what could be bad about it? You know, what could be the downfall of, of doing this? So we kind of just sprang into it. I mean, like, I think we, we had that talk like a week before I reached out to you and then it was just like, that's it. You know, we're rolling with it. We're going with it. And I think even before we started working together, I just felt all this confidence, like knowing, I mean, obviously my brand was like pretty bad for the first six months. It was still, (laughs) it was still outdated, but even just knowing that I was like, this rebrand was like on the horizon, I just felt more confident. And like, especially as we worked together and you gave me all our messaging and everything, and I knew what it was going to look like, like I just, a total game changer. Yeah. Which I think for people who are watching the video, I'll put 
like screenshots of what Holly's Brandon website used to look like. Um, because side note, this podcast is also going on YouTube as a YouTube video. So if you're listening to the podcast, um, but if you looked at your Brandon website from the outside looking in, like it looked okay. Like there wasn't anything, you wouldn't go to the website and be like, oh my gosh, like this website's horrible or anything. Like it looked good, but there's a difference between a, a brand being pretty and looking good and there being a message behind it and reaching who you want to reach. And I think that was the difference between your brand, like not aesthetically, but the messaging behind it. And like you said, you know, what you wanted to go after and what you wanted to um, convey within your branding. So why do you think now looking back, why, because you are, you're a successful business owner, you're a successful wedding photographer. Why do you think that your business and brand is a success? Um, I think that our personalities, mine and AJ's, are such an important part of the brand because our service is not just taking pretty photos, but it's like the experience that we provide. So um, having our personalities and our, I mean, our presence, I guess, being conveyed in our brand is, I think, what makes it such a big success. And speaking of my old brand, um, it was just so generic, you know, it, it was like professional and pretty and everything like you're saying, but it didn't have, um, it just wasn't original to us. So I think that's the, bis- the biggest success is that um, it's just, it's very unique and very us, you know? Yeah. I think that there's different levels. There's like brands and websites on the bottom level that are like, you look at them and you just kind of cringe. (laughs) And then there's like this mid ground where it's generic. Like you said, it's not a terrible looking brand and outside looking in, like it wouldn't look that bad. And then there's like the higher level brand where it has that it factor, so to speak. Like it has, like you can tell that they invested time and money into the brand and that it is unique to them. So I think that's, there's three different levels. And I think a lot of people, they just think on like two different levels whenever it comes to brand, they think, you know, DIY and professional, but there's really like a larger scale. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I like that you said that it's your personalities that make your brand a success because the way that people shoot, I mean, the way that you're, you shoot your photos, the way that you edit them can all be, um, they can all be duplicated, but your brand personality and your message and what you bring to the table is harder for somebody to replicate. Um, and so I, I like that you said that. Um, all right. So moving into your ideal client, we kind of talked about this a little bit, how you said that you wanted to reach a specific type of person. How did you go about finding who that, who that ideal bride was? Um, I think it was just looking back at um, the brides. I mean, we speak to both the bride and the groom, the, the couple as a whole, but definitely like the bride is the ideal person that I'm trying to speak to, you know? Um, so looking back on the brides that we've had that we've just like really clicked with, like from the beginning, they totally trusted us. We're super jazzed about the whole thing. And even on the wedding day, like we just had the best experience. Um, looking back on those brides, there's been like, I mean, I love them all, but there's been, you know, like five or six that have been very similar. Like, I think if we got them in a room, they would become best friends because they're just like the same, they're kind of the same bride, you know? Um, So like looking at them, I'm like, this is, I want this bride over and over. I want to shoot this wedding over and over, you know? So I kind of just took their, their personalities, their wants, their desires, their fears, all of that, like they aligned so well that I was like, she just became this person, this ideal client. You know what I mean? Like it kind of just manifested. All right. So I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense. (laughs) Well, I'm curious because I get asked this question a lot. And so I'm curious coming from, from you, I get asked whenever I'm first starting out and I don't have any past clients to kind of look at, how do you, do you, how do you define who you want to work with? Um, that's really tricky because I definitely did have like an ideal client before, you know, I had all these brides that um, I super clicked with, but I so is that, that, is that ideal client different than the one that you have now? 
Yes, I would say yes. I mean, they're very, they're very similar, obviously, because our, our ideal client is the one that I want to work with, right? So before I knew exactly who she was, like, they, I mean, they're pretty similar, <laughs> but just knowing, I think knowing like their, their wants and their fears is what came with like actually meeting them. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense at all. <laughs> yes. And the way that I talk about this from like an educational, like learning perspective is you have ideal clients that people talk about and it's like, oh, they drive a red Jeep and they listen to country <laughs> music. And it's like getting down to the psychographics is what really defines your ideal client. So what you're talking about with what are their wants, what are their needs, what are their pain points? Because all of that stuff is what you um, buy from. And so that's the part that you're saying really changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So going back to the original question, because I think I sidetracked you. Uh, oh, whenever yeah. you don't have any past brides to look at or past oh, yeah. clients, how do you, how did you like, you know, navigate who you wanted to work with? I think pinpointing, like you said, like trying to figure out every single thing about them, like what car they drive, even though that's not relevant to their wedding day at all. <laughs> but um, like just narrowing down as much as you can, like at that point, it really is just like your ideal bride because you haven't met her yet. Right. Um, I think just trying to like niche that down as much as you can um, and really thinking about who you want to serve and not I mean, for, for wedding clients, I think it's not like the wedding that you want to shoot. That, that used to be how I would think about it is like the weddings that I wanted to photograph, but instead like who the person is that you want to work with and who you want to serve with and just nailing that down. That's my Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, I like it. I get asked that question a lot. So I'm always curious to know like what other people, other people think. All right. So we kind of went through the brand message, the brand design, uh, defining your ideal client, which is all in phase one of the, the signature experience. Um, and so now we're kind of, let's get to the biggest changes that happen on your website. So like the website prior, were you getting any leads from your website or was it just kind of like a portfolio piece? Um, I would get a few none that were actually maybe just one the whole entire time that's from just like Google, you know, mm -hmm. um, most like I would get inquiries from the website, but they'd say they found me on the knot or through a friend or something like that. I know just, um, actual genuine website leads. Yeah. I think this happens a lot and you can tell me if you, if you think so too, that a lot of people, they start out with their website because most creatives like wedding photographers and event planners and stuff like that, it starts out as a passion and they don't know that it's going to morph into a business. And so they get referred to family and friends and stuff and they create a website as more of a portfolio. And then somewhere along the way, like that portfolio needs to transform into a marketing piece. So is that like a similar experience to you? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think at first, like the, that first stage that you're talking about, I didn't even really have a website. <laughs> like I just would have like Instagram or something like that and just word of mouth, you know, but as soon as I decided to invest in a website, cause that's what everybody tells you to do. Right. Um, I like got a template that had like, you know, the about me part and everything like that, but it was very generic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, let's dive into, cause your website is only one piece of marketing. And I know that you, like I said, very successful wedding photographer, like you get a lot of inquiries and a lot of brides. And so what has been the greatest marketing success for your business? Definitely my biggest success has been showing up on Instagram. I think obviously my website is the best and it's the, the it's like the tip top of the pyramid, right? It's the best thing. Um, but Instagram has been where um, I've been showing up as like a human. That's always what I say. And I don't know if that makes sense, but um, obviously, like I said, my personality is a huge part of the brand and it's very important, but showing that um, I'm not just like a business and like a company, but that I'm a person I think has led to a lot of success and led to um, couples treating me like a person and treating me, you know, not just like um, just a generic like email response, you know, like they really care about me so that I can care about them so that we can form this genuine relationship. 
um, which is like the number one thing that I want to do, even after, um, you know, shooting photos, like cultivating relationships is the number one thing that I want to do. So showing up on Instagram, on stories, especially, um, I'm trying to do more video content, like IGTV, stuff like that. Um, that has been, that has brought me the most success, I would say. Yeah. They want to book you for you. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. They're not just looking for like the lowest price photographer or whatever. Like it's because mm -hmm. they want to work with you because they see your personality and how much fun you are. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So lastly, let's chat numbers. So before you invested in your brand, in your website, uh, kind of take us through like how many leads you would get on average in, you may not know the specific numbers, but what was like your um, booking rate? So booking rate, yeah, I don't know the leads, unfortunately. Um, but I would say booking rate during like the, the busier seasons would be about two weddings per month. You would get leads two weddings per month. Or I'd book two weddings per month. Okay. You would book two weddings per yeah. month. Definitely more, more leads than that, but I don't know the exact number. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so with those leads, were a lot of them, I can't remember beforehand, did you have your pricing on your website or no? Um, no, well, I had it listed as like, you know, packages started, you know, the number, but, um, yeah. I didn't have like all the packages listed out and everything. Okay. So before you invest in your brand, new website, did you note or an after, I guess before versus after, did you notice like the quality of leads coming in? Yes, absolutely. I think, um, the most tangible difference was that the venues, um, that these couples had booked were much higher end much more like aspirational wedding venues. Um, and the other thing in terms of response from leads is that I no longer get like pushback about my prices. Like that would be a struggle, not always, but very frequently couples would be like, oh, this is my budget. I'm really trying to stick in it. Like, can you give me a discount, blah, blah, blah. But now they'll just say like, sorry, like that you're not in my budget. Thanks for reaching out, you know? And then that's it. Like there's no back and forth. Like they respect my prices. Even if I'm not in their budget, they are not questioning my value, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's been a huge improvement. Um, yeah, definitely like night and day from that. And then, okay. So you're booking about two leads per month or two weddings per month beforehand. And now afterwards, so quality of leads is like so much better, uh, mm -hmm. dream venues, but how many, how many weddings are you booking on average per month now, which I will preface this by saying that we are going through the pandemic stuff. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but, uh, before that. Yeah. So, um, the first month, like the month that we launched, which I launched on the fourth. So I basically had the whole month of being rebranded. Um, I booked five weddings, which is the most that I had ever booked in my whole entire life. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, and I, I feel like the, um, ratio of like leads to booking was more even, you know, like I wasn't getting a thousand leads, which is not what I want. Right. Like I want my ideal bride inquiring with me. Um, it was just that everyone who inquired booked with me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that was amazing. And I think a lot of it has to go back with perceived value. A lot of people, whenever they book a, a discovery call with me, they'll, they'll say, I want people to land on my website and know that they're going to be spending money with me. And I think that whenever people land on your website, that they know that they're going to be spending money with you and that you're worth it. And so by the time that you get to the actual pricing information, they're kind of expecting it already. Right. Yeah. All right. So I know I, I can talk about the signature experience. So I'm blue in the face because I've spent a lot of time crafting it and, <laughs> but it's one thing for me to talk about it. This will be like, just tell people about what it was like to go through the signature experience and what was like your biggest takeaway from it? Mm, besides like my beautiful dream brand, that's my biggest takeaway. <laughs> um, <laughs> like what, what about the experience was like the most surprising part? Right. Um, okay. I tend to ramble and I have lots of thoughts and ideas that I do. <laughs> I cannot convey them for the life of me. I try really hard, but I just cannot, you know, I... I can't talk. So I think that was the most amazing thing was that I just threw everything at you, all of my ideas, 
all of my ramblings. And then you brought them back to me and you're like, here. And it was like, oh my gosh, that's everything I've ever wanted to say. This is exactly how I feel. You just like took it <laughs> and made it <laughs> um, amazing. So that was the biggest thing that I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, it blew me away, honestly, because I was really worried that I did, was just rambling and I didn't actually have anything valuable that I was saying. But um, so I would say like the copy was the most amazing thing because it, it just, my personality was in it, AJ's personality was in it, all of my thoughts and dreams and the values I wanted to convey, like it was just all right there. And I've taken that and it's been kind of like the foundation of all the copy that I put out. Like even like my Instagram captions, I'm looking back at it and like, it's kind of like a, a brand voice guide almost, you know? Yeah. Um, Which I'm pretty sure I, reading through your questionnaire, I think you wrote on there uh, like a couple times. I don't know if I'm making sense. Does this make sense to you? Like, I think I'm just rambling. (laughs) I do that all the time. I probably said that like four times in this interview right now. Um, Yes. So that's, that's just amazing. I think like, obviously you are talented in so many different ways, but the most valuable part to me, I think was like being able to learn enough about me to like put my personality out there and like yeah. it's the word I'm trying to think of like you kind of filtered through all my rambling and like gave me yeah. a genuine piece that was like totally me you know um I think that was just yeah the best part <laughs> well I'm glad that you enjoyed it and that you came on here and that it has been such a success for you and it will be on the other side of this whole pandemic stuff going yeah. on um if you could give somebody just starting out uh in the wedding industry a piece of advice what would you say to them um i would say do not compare yourself to others i know that's very hard but i think building confidence in yourself and in your message like the sooner you can nail that down and the sooner you can really know what you're trying to do, who you're trying to serve, the the sooner you will find success, I think, because there's a million wedding photographers out there. It's such a saturated market, but there's only one of you. And I think that's the most important thing you can bring to the table is yourself. Yeah, that's the one that people can't replicate or they can try, but it won't be the exact same. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Holly, and and spilling all about your brand and your and your hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun.